Today we are going to dismantle a Bolex. Uh, this one is serial number 227811 and uh, that would put its manufacture date around 1967 or so. All right. First we take off the crank. Then the little knobs. important part here is uh, many of these screws have very narrow slots so uh, nothing you're gonna buy is actually gonna fit them you will have to make your own out of whatever you buy and rather than grind them which will has a chance of ruining the temper I usually take and uh, just hand uh, trim them on sandpaper. You can get a good finish that way in a very straight screwdriver. After you do that, you take off your viewfinder. And in order to get at the screws that hold the viewfinder, you have to take the four little screws off that hold the cover on. Again, very narrow slots. I believe, I'll see when I get the cover off, this camera may be still originally sealed. I'm not sure. Well, it has a number on it. It's been apart once before. There you can see the screws that hold it. And there's the viewfinder. Open the door. Take out the pressure plate. Now this camera still has its turret lock, but I usually remove those because when we don't use very long lenses and when I leave them on the kids will let them flop over and there's a lens in there and they go to change the lens it'll hit the lens and I've had kids yank this little arm off uh, rather than stopping to see why it's not turning anymore and just keep pulling on it till they break it so now I just leave those off makes it easier on me there's a nut on the inside six millimeter take off the other three screws retaining the turret. safe place and now you loosen these two screws because sometimes they pinch 
on the main plate. You don't have to take them out. Just give them a little uh, one full turn or so after you break them loose. And then these three hold the mo movement in. Okay, that's all that holds it in. Now, some people pry in here to get the plate out because sometimes the ceiling mastic that's along the edges will hold it in quite strongly. But when you go prying on it, you can bend it and or you leave scars. The easiest way to take them out is you just hold it and you give it a hit. And there it is, there's your empty body, and there's your motor. This one looks particularly damaged because, as you can see here, there are teeth missing on the spring motor, which makes it sort of useless. Can't even send it back to Bolex to be rewound. But uh, I haven't been in this one before because whenever I do, I remove this arm and just thread the hole because again students mistake in this arm for this one which pops the spools out and they grab that and bend it yanking on it and then it slips over its stop and uh, the take-up reel as it comes around binds on the edge there and uh, the camera is rendered useless okay. so now these are the other I'll change trays for this the outside tray. Now we have the inside tray. And these are the pieces you have to take off. The trigger plate. These two screws which hold the little relay gear assembly that goes from the mechanism back here and drives the footage counter. So we have to take that out. All right, then we have to take off the frame counter. And for that, again, you need a special tool. I don't know if you can see it there, but that was just hand filed that little notch and thin the screwdriver to fit into this slotted nut here. Now this next step requires the Bolex tool, which I don't know where you're going to get. You have to make one, which would be not the easiest thing in the world, but we need to remove the pins that are inside here. This is what the Bolex tool looks like. It has a driving pin there. If you try to pound it out, you're going to wind up with a bent spindle. Then you're going to have to replace the spindle because it'll never run right. Doesn't want to go that way.
pin. There's the gear. And this one still has the pin in the one-to-one -one shaft, which again indicates to me I did not have this camera apart. Because I don't replace those. We never put motors, electric motors, because that's what that drive pin is for. take off the governor assembly that's these two screws here this is the heart of the bolex this is what maintains your speed it's also the most difficult part to tune correctly even when you buy a new one from the factory it's not like you can just slip it in so this is the governor assembly it's a series of three little brake pads on these arms here. A little sliding spring arrangement when the little arm here has the longest leverage on that spring. It's the slowest speed. And when it has the least amount of leverage at that point, that's the highest speed. Alright, so that's very critical. And then this little brake drum it spins in and as it spins faster the little weights that are here on the end of these arms and spring assemblies the centrifugal force pushes them out which grabs the little brake drum 